Hey, uh, my name is Greg. I'm a CTO at Urban Sports Club. So um, I'll be speaking now about how we made a transition from uh, native apps to our React Native. There are not that many people in here. So how many of you know about Urban Sports Club? Nice. Good. So uh, just quickly for those who doesn't know, uh, what do we do? We, our mission is inspire people to live healthy and active lifestyle. And to do so, we provide uh, a single membership to different variety of sports activities in studios uh, all around the Europe. So currently, we are in 10 countries, uh, many more than 60 cities, and we offer access to around 10,000 plus venues. So this slide is a bit outdated. <clears throat> so uh, our mobile app, we struggle a lot with, uh, with the apps we, we had. So they were built a long time ago. There was a lot of legacy codes. They were coming from uh, different origins. So for example, the um, Android app was uh, originated from Urban Sports Club whether iOS app came from the other company that got acquired by Urban Sports Club. So they provided completely different UI and UX to our members. Uh, search behaved differently, like all other functions like was, was really kind of inconsistent between, uh, between those apps. So we decided that we need to do something about it and basically had uh, three choices, three ways to go. One was that we do a, uh, like a deep refactoring of the one app, of the iOS app. The other one was that we will build a hybrid um, application based on the uh, native infrastructure and like put some, uh, some new functions or features in React Native. And the third way was actually building the React Native app from the scratch. So we decided to take the, the risky uh, Root. So we started the uh, project of rebuilding our app um, in React Native, and we almost finished that. So there were a few challenges on the way that I, I'd like to mention here. The main one that we faced, and we spent a lot of time basically uh, overcoming this challenge, is that uh, we chosen the React Native navigation in the beginning that uh, promised us um, a, like a similar to native experience with navigation, but ended up uh, being quite unflexible, like in our opinion, and led to a lot of um, uh, hacks we had to do. So we switched to uh, React navigation, and it's actually there will be a presentation at 3 p.m. Uh, from the React uh, navigation guys. <clears throat> so we switched to React navigation. It took us six weeks actually to execute the switch, but in the end, uh, it's much simpler to use. And uh, we tested the, the UI and UX of the uh, final implementation. And it was actually like, there was really good uh, user experience provided still. The other thing that we uh, figured out, the, the sticky things, so when you scroll, the sticky things doesn't really stick. So we spent some time uh, redesigning uh, our our apps, and like we got rid actually like of majority of the sticky uh, components. The other one, uh, some time it taken to uh, upgrade the React uh, native to the new version, but it's like a standard uh, procedure. Basically, you can expect it with all other technologies. Uh, the other thing is our API, so basically backend. So we decided to keep API untouched and just rebuild the, uh, the front end. However, like going through the implementation, we realized that we would better start, uh, like put backend engineers together with mobile en engineers earlier. So the modification of the API would come along with implementation of the new user flows and the new interfaces. The uh, last thing we struggled is the third-party libraries. So not all services provide good support for React Native. Uh, some of them, like some services that we use, they had to open a fork uh, specifically for us to like to provide us with SDK that works uh, well for um, React Native. Um, 
good things though. So we had uh, in our team, we had native developers from the beginning who switched to, to React Native. That helped us a lot uh, with building the, the infrastructure and organizing the continuous integration setup in an easy way. Also, we have chosen TypeScript for, uh, for our app, so the conversion was like easier. Um, and we started like automating a lot of things, including uh, our CI and also test coverage. So our app is covered uh, almost by 70% with, uh, with tests. Yeah, like we, the, how we rolling it out, we started like internal beta in June, only with uh, our members of stuff. And then like from, um, from August, we started opening up to, uh, to the different uh, member groups. So we started with 50 people, then in October with 500 people. Now it's uh, open internationally, and uh, we'll start rolling out it to production uh, in the, by the end of this month. So you can find us uh, here at Send B1. Um, you can join the beta program if you'd like to uh, try out our beta app and provide us with a valuable feedback and we'll be highly appreciated to hear from you. Thank you very much.